Should I do it this way? Or is that the better way? Should this be something I do now? Or is this something I should do later? What is the best way to take care of this clutter? I could do it this way, but maybe that way would be better. Our minds can trip us up so easily. And when we have this desire to do things the quote right way, well, that just makes things all the more complicated. On episode 28 of the Intentional Mom podcast, we're going to be talking about when perfection keeps you from taking action. Make sure you listen all the way to the end. Let's dive in. Well, hey there, I am Jennifer Roskamp, a certified life coach and homeschool mom of nine who is passionate about helping women just like you embrace the here and now while also being focused on creating the life you actually want. In reality, it's not about thinking life will get so much better or so much easier when you fill in the blank. Let's work on creating a life you love now. So let's dive in and get started on redefining Supermom to be someone who is present, intentional, and content rather than perfect in our homes, in our lives, and in our own skin. Let's get started. This is the Intentional Mom Podcast. So I am your typical firstborn only child, type A personality. I do have siblings, but I was almost nine before my first one was born. So essentially that makes me an only child. But I'm your typical type A personality and I like doing things right the first time. I'm uber competitive and I firmly believe that the only way to do things is the right way. At least when I'm not the one controlling my brain. But what this really means is because of all of these things, type A, firstborn, only child, what it really means is that I'm kind of a perfectionist on steroids. And as much as it can be useful and helpful to be a perfectionist, it also can be anything but. So as I've studied the brain and human behavior and, and, and things like this more from the life coaching side of things, I've learned what you might also know yourself to be true, which is wanting to be perfect isn't all it's cracked up to be, and it's not even possible. But it's definitely not all it's cracked up to be, and at times this desire can keep you from doing anything at all. And we call this perfection paralysis, at least I do. So what is perfection paralysis? Well, it usually includes these three things. It might include other things as well, but these are really the heavy hitters when it comes to perfection paralysis. Number one, overthinking. Overthinking. Again, I kind of gave you a little teaser of that in the in the opening, right? Should I do it this way or that way? Maybe this way is better. Should I do it now? Should I do it later? What happens if I do it this way? What happens if I do it that way, right? And we think and we think and we think and around and around and around we go. And we just kind of, again, we're paralyzed by all that thinking. But overthinking, that could indicate that you are in perfection paralysis. It, It doesn't necessarily mean you are, but it's just one of the things to watch for is overthinking. The next thing to watch for is unrealistic expectations. I think every single one of us does this at times. And some of it is because we're human and we just have the best of intentions and we want things to be a certain way. And sometimes that want can kind of cloud our vision a little bit from being able to actually see what's, what's truly possible. And so we tend to, if, if you're a perfectionist, and I say we, again, because I fall in that camp, we tend to often have unrealistic expectations for both ourselves and for others. So unrealistic expectations is something to look for. The next thing to look for, the third thing to look for is a fear of failing. If you are afraid to fail, if you look at failure through a negative lens, and that's something I do talk about a lot. I know we've even talked about it on the podcast here, how to look at failure differently. Failure doesn't have to mean what we're all conditioned to thinking it means. The number one thing failure doesn't have to mean is stopping point stop. Let's stop here. That, that's, that's the best it's going to get, right? But if you tend to be someone who gets held back by the thought of failure rather than just kind of understanding that failure is always a possibility, well, again, you might be kind of stuck in this per- perfection paralysis. 
So when any, but especially when all of these things are present, we can feel paralyzed from taking any action at all. So that's kind of the diagnosis side of perfection paralysis. So let's start to talk about what the treatment of this looks like. And I say treatment not because it's a bad thing. There's nothing wrong with you. But I will say that, again, when you lean on the side of perfectionistic tendencies, it's, it's not going to be the most ideal set of circumstances for you. So you just want to be aware, right? That's why I gave you the diagnosis part. You want to be aware of when you're getting paralyzed in perfection so that you can then decide, is this the best place for me? Is this helping me? Maybe I need to change some things so that I can actually get a different outcome. Because perfection paralysis is essentially not any outcome at all, at least not in the direction you're trying to go. So let's talk a little bit about this treatment. So here's how to override these tendencies that can keep us paralyzed on the starting line. Because again, they're going to be there. If you are a perfectionist person, that's to some extent just the way that you're wired. I get that. That's kind of the way that I'm wired too. So those those tendencies are kind of always going to be there lurking under the surface, but we want to be able to override them and make them not the most powerful voice in the room. So here's how to do that. I've got three ways. Number one is to give yourself a time limit to spend on the thinking and the analyzing. This is going to help offset that overthinking problem that is keeping you paralyzed. So you need to give yourself a certain and reasonable amount of time to let yourself, to let your brain try to think through the possibilities, try to run through the scenarios, maybe even the worst case scenarios if you so choose, but you've got to give yourself a reasonable time limit for the thinking part before you're going to say, enough, I've, I've reached the end of my thinking. I've reached my thinking limit. I've hit that time limit. And now I need to just get out there and start the doing part, right? We want to move out of that paralysis. So the first thing to do is give yourself a reasonable time limit to spend on the thinking and the analyzing. And it could be that when you're ready to finally get unparalyzed, it could be that you say, you know what? I've done enough of the thinking. That's all I've done. I need to start taking action right now. So your time limit, if you're looking at it honestly, and you might discover, I need to just move to the doing right now. So that time limit might be super minimal, but I do encourage you to choose wisely. Do not give yourself too long to think and overthink and think and over overthink. And again, stay stuck in that paralyzation camp. So that's number one. Number two, to get unstuck and unparalyzed is, again, when you have unrealistic expectations, you're going to offset that by avoid thinking, just avoid thinking about the end result. Sometimes when we are so focused on that end result, again, it, it's, it's, we overthink that too, right? Am I going to get there? How long is it going to take me? Is it going to look that, you know, is it going to look this way or is it going to look that way? And again, while it's good to understand the end result because that gives us a target to shoot for, when we're paralyzed by perfection, it can really trip us up. So avoid thinking about the end result. So you're saying, okay, if I'm going to do that, what am I going to think then? So here's what you're going to think about instead. You're going to think about just what the first or second best things are for you to do. I love thinking about that song from Frozen. Sometimes I get that in my head. Maybe it's because I have two little girls, but it also is a really good line in a song to do the next right thing. Sometimes I think about that. I think about that a lot. And as someone who can get paralyzed by perfection, well, that that right there is something that often gets me unstuck. I only have to think about doing the next right thing. And sometimes, again, if you can really play devil, if I'm, if I'm really playing devil's advocate here, maybe you need to take the word right out of it. Because again, as a perfectionist, we can say, oh, but I don't want to choose the wrong thing. Wait, I have to do the right thing? That means I can't get it wrong. <laughs> and we can get back on this perfection paralyzation trail. So if you're thinking about the best thing or the right thing and you're noticing that word is stressing you out, if the perfectionist tendencies are coming back in there when you're thinking about it that way, just think about 
the next thing. Just, I just have to do the first thing. I just have to do the second thing. And after that, I will examine where I'm at. I will examine where I'm going. I will examine, am I on the path to where I'm trying to get to or am I not? You can assess later. But avoid thinking about the end result if you're stuck in perfection paralysis. Just think about what's right in front of you and focus there and do that. That's number two. Number three, this is kind of a strategy. This is a a tool. It's more like a tool that... Um, that I'm giving you here. I have a lot of strategies and tools that I give uh, people a lot. Usually they come after we've already kind of done the problem solving, after we've asked the really good questions and come up with the best solutions. A lot of times the tools come after that. But this is a, a tool that I felt you would you would really benefit from hearing. So number three is to use this pattern. Again, if you're paralyzed by perfection, use this pattern. Plan, briefly plan, and then take a step do the step. Plan the step, do the step. Plan the step, do the step. So you are truly, I mean, this is baby steps. This is, this is exactly what baby steps are. And again, it's when we look too far down the road, that's where perfection can start to paralyze us. It's not usually because we're afraid of doing the, the wrong thing right out of the gate. It's more so when we look at the whole thing that we can start to get these unrealistic expectations and that we tend to overthink and that really that fear of failure comes in. If you're truly just following the pattern of plan the step you're going to take, do the step. Plan the step you're going to take, do the step. And you just baby step your way through it. Well, before you know it, you're unstuck and you're out of that perfection paralysis. And then you don't have to be quite so structured in how you're actually accomplishing things. A lot of times it's just a matter of getting out of that paralyzation mode. We just essentially need to get unstuck in that way so that we can continue taking action from there. That's really, again, that's, that's, we kind of just need to get started. And once we get started and we start to see results and we start to experience progress and we start to maybe feel a little bit of relief, we start to feel a little bit of that sense of pride, we start to, again, make progress. Whatever it is that we're trying to do, well, we actually start doing that. We start achieving that. And we start experiencing the benefits that come with that, whatever they might be. And so, again, once we just kind of get started, we kind of get that momentum. And then we don't have to think quite so hard. We don't have to be quite so calculated on moving out of perfection. It kind of just comes in and helps Helps, it helps us out all on its own once we just start. So that's why really starting is the key. It's the starting line is where perfection tends to show up. And to some extent, anytime that you set something aside and revisit it and pick it up again to work on it, of course, that's kind of like another starting line. So those are the most common times where perfection comes, tends to creep in. But these, again, it, it comes down to diagnosing it. And I gave you the three symptoms that you can be on the lookout for to diagnose. You know what? I think I might be in this perfection paralysis. You're going to look for the overthinking. You're going to look for unrealistic expectations. You're going to look for the fear of failing. And when you recognize some of those things or you recognize that you are in perfection paralysis, you're going to give yourself that time limit. You're going to not think about the end result. You're just going to think about what's in front of you. And then you're going to use that tool, that baby step pattern that I gave you. Plan the thing, do the thing. Plan the thing, do the thing. So these three things really help ward off perfection paralysis. The idea is to keep moving, ideally forward, but sometimes it's just movement. And even if it's backwards movement, it counts, it matters. It's the effort. It's not the result. So wanting to do things well, well, that's one thing. But expecting yourself to get it perfect is another. One of these is helpful. The other is not. So that's what I had for you today. Until we talk again, make it an intentional day. Well, if you tend to be a perfectionist, I hope that you have found this episode to be helpful. It's one thing to hold yourself accountable, and it's another thing to expect that you'll get it right 
that you'll get it all right all of the time. You won't, I won't, no one will. In the next episode, I'll be sharing a conversation with someone who has strategies all figured out for getting meals on the table faster and with a whole lot less stress. It's our guest speaker episode, and if meals are a struggle for you, you will want to be sure you check it out. We'll talk again soon.